Hey everyone, thanks for watching. I have a very exciting show for you today. We're into these weekly sessions with Jonathan Twomley. How are you doing, sir? I'm, I'm great. How are you, Michael? It's great to see you again after only a week. So. Yeah, there you go. I, I really like this because again, we can just keep building on what we're doing and I think we have a great topic today and uh, let's, let's just get into it. The topic of the day is, okay, so you two individuals, yourself and I, have both clearly come out and said we are closer to the peak than the bottom. Uh, we are very risk averse. In fact, the the heading or the image I put on last week's interview was warning. Mm -hmm. uh, so what is an excited real estate investor looking to get in? Uh, they got the money maybe, so the money's not the problem, but they just want to get started, right? What, how, do you, how do you help people that are in that situation, uh, Jonathan? Yeah, so this is something that I talk about quite a bit. Because if you are one of my followers, if you're in my Facebook group or in my program, uh, you'll know that I am very emphatic about the, the fact that, uh, you know, the bottom of the market was a long time ago and the top, we've really been sitting at the top for quite a while. I, I don't think it's an issue of like whether we've hit, hit the peak or not, because we're in this weird cycle where we've been at the peak for a while. Yeah. Right, prices are really that there's not much appreciation left to be had, you know, without just like rent growth yeah. itself, right? Just Agreed. kind of raising NOI. And, and even that, I think we're kind of, we're seeing the beginnings of kind of topping out um, in a lot of markets on rent growth. So we're, the, the only issue is like, what's going to come along out of left field that nobody's expecting to upset the apple cart, right? Yeah. And um, so, Given that that's the situation, as you said, if you if you have just you know, for whatever reason either you've just discovered this asset class as a thing to do, or you know you've been sitting on the sidelines for a long time, and you finally made the decision to start, what do you do now? You know you're you're you don't want to like lose that momentum. You don't you've made that decision. You're ready to go. What what are the best things that you should be doing right now? And I I tell my students that this is a relationship business, right? This is all, I mean, whether you're talking about getting money to do deals, whether you're talking about getting deals, whether you're talking about finding the people who are going to be working, you know, for you, your professional team, it's all about building networks. It's about, it's a people business. And that is where you should be investing your time right now mm. because the way that I see it, and this is what I'm doing myself, right? I, I'm, you know, lots of people know I'm out of the market. I sold everything, you know, crushed it for my investors. People are really happy, but I'm not really actively looking for deals. I mean, I kind of like keep a hand in. If something bizarre comes up, that's great. I would jump on it, but I just haven't seen those deals. Yep. But, um, but I'm not, uh, but I'm not like out of business, right? Like I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not sitting on an island someplace. I'm still building the business. So what am I doing? I, I'm, I'm out there building relationships with investors so that when the opportunities come, whether it's a one-off bizarre thing that just pops up now yeah. or whether it's the market changing so that there are a lot more good deals out there, mm -hmm. I want to be ready for that. So I spend my time building relationships, you know, being out there on social media, being out there in my Facebook group, talking to people, holding events getting building that network of investors so that yeah and they're still coming they're still coming in they're coming in you know they're coming in the door on a regular basis yeah and i i'm adding them into my system uh because i want to be ready because i i know i think a lot of people in it, sort of this relates to something i talk about all the time and this is relevant no matter where the market is but it's especially relevant right now when you're trying to raise investor money right and, and actually this relates to brokers as well. But when you're trying to raise investor money, you need to dig the well before you need the water. Yes. Right. You, you hear all the time and I heard it and, and believed it and made the mistake years ago that if you find a great deal, the money will find you, right? You hear this all the time. If you yes. find a great deal, the money will find you. It's not true unless you've invested the time in building the network first, right? The money is not going to like, if you find, you can find the most awesome deal in the world, but if you have not built the relationships first, you know, 
the, the money's not going to just sort of come out of the wall somehow, right? Yeah. You know, like you're not going to turn on the faucet and there's going to be the money. Yeah. But even if you do meet some investors, they're not going to believe that the deal is as good as you say it is yeah. because they don't know who you are. You have no credibility. Yes. Right? So you have to spend time ahead of time building that credibility, building those relationships so that when you do find that good deal, you're going to be ready to move on it and, and the money will come. Right. And you have to understand it's also a numbers game. You know, you, mm. I think what happens to a lot of people is, you know, they talk to five friends, the five friends all say, I, I want to be in on this. I'm going to give you a hundred thousand dollars to invest. And you're like, I've got $500,000 to invest. I guarantee what's going to happen is you're going to find that property where you need $500,000 of equity. And four of those five guys are going to say no to you. Yeah. And the reason is going to be not that they've changed their minds about real estate or they've they changed their minds about you or anything else. Life gets in the way. Exactly. They're going to tell you something like what they, in the same situation, what they told me was, yeah, Jonathan, you know what? my wife and I decided that we're going to take this money and buy a new house. Yep. Right. Or we're going to, I need the money for college tuition or I need the money for something else. Or yep. I just lost a ton of money in the stock market and I'm feeling anxious about investing right now. Or, you know, I had this unexpected expense, whatever it is, yeah. that's what they're going to tell you. The one guy is going to be ready to go, but the other four are going to say, show me the next one. Let me just keep me yeah. in the loop. Next one. Yeah, exactly. And so you have to really have like to get that 500,000, you need 20 or 30 or 40 people who have promised you that hundred K yeah. to make sure that you can close. And so you should be building that net network. And now is like the ideal time to be doing this. Yes. And I'll tell you why. The, the reason that right now is the ideal time to be doing this is that so many people out there, they're hot for real estate. They want to get involved in it. They're, they're willing to hear this story from you, right? They're willing to hear about how great multifamily real estate is because they're not as sophisticated as you are. They're not looking at the market. They don't understand the market's overvalued. They're just looking around. They're hearing all these people jumping in yeah. and they've got the buzz, right? And they've seen, they're seeing the people like me who cashed out, yeah. who made a ton of money. And they think that they, they don't understand cycles. So they don't realize like you got to buy at the bottom and cash out at the top to do that. So, but they're all ready to go, right? Yeah. So they're open to that conversation now for you to get, to, to bring them onto your platform. And, you know, what you can do is do something different than what everybody else is doing, which will help you stand out and it'll build your credibility, which is to say to them, I want to, you know, I'm, I'm building this business. I want to be, I want you on my platform, but I don't think now is the greatest time in the world to invest. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Everyone else is saying it's the greatest time in the world to invest, but it, it's, it's, this is why I believe it's not. And you tell them, and because you're giving them not only a different message, but you're giving them a message that is like, I don't need your money now. I don't want your money now. Right. Uh, I don't think it's the right time. Right. It's not a self-serving message. Mm -hmm. You're going to build your credibility so much more than if you just went out that and you were rah, 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 pumping deals. So yeah. now is the time to be building and getting ready. This is, it's a great, great time to be doing this. I can't emphasize enough, like what a, what an opportunity you have right now to know like what's coming. Yep. Right. And how to get ready for it and to be ready for it. So, you know, obviously we don't know exactly when it's going to happen. I can't tell you, yeah. you know, February 12th, 2021 is the day. Right. But you, we know it's coming. Oh, yeah. It's just a matter of when. Yeah. No so question. you can get ready. Yeah. So a couple of things. We've talked about your Facebook group a couple of times. So let's plug that real quick. Where can they find you? Because people watching this are going to want to check that out. Yeah. So the Facebook group uh, is called Multifamily Investment Community. And you can find it just by searching for it on Facebook. But I'm going to warn you about something, which is that this is a really curated group. I'm very strict about it who gets in. Yep. And I actually posted the other day that my stats for 2019, I admitted f about 3,700 people. I rejected almost 2000 people. Yeah. And the way that you get rejected is by not answering the questions that are asked when you try to join. Now, the most important question to ask there is, yes, I promise I'm not going to post deals and spam the group. If you don't answer that question, you don't get in. Uh, the other questions are optional, right? You, you can give me your email if you want it. That you're, you're going to get in if you give it to me or not. But you have to answer that question and the, about not spamming the group. And if you 
the problem is that Facebook doesn't present those questions if you log in from a phone. Ah. So if you want to join the group, the first time, get on your computer and search on your computer on Facebook, and then you'll get the questions. And then after that, you can use your phone. Okay. You, know, you can access the group by phone anytime, but to get those vital, vital, vital entry questions, you have to log in from a computer. I, I, I had no idea. I have questions I, on my private group too, and that makes total sense now. It took me a long time to figure out why this was. There, like nobody seemed to know the answer, but I actually, <laughs> I joined a, myself, I, I joined a group about growing Facebook groups. Yeah. And the guy in there like knows everything about Facebook groups. His name is Arnie Giske, ah. G-I-S-K-E. Yeah. And he's got a group, uh, group funnels, I think is his name, the name of his, his thing. But he, he just has like figured out everything about Facebook groups. And they finally in that, when I joined that, that program, I finally figured out why, <laughs> you know, half of the people were not get, were not answering the questions. It's because they weren't getting them because they're on their phones. On their phone. There you so, go. Yeah. There you go. All right. So again, join the group, join from your PC, answer the questions. Uh, again, I love the fact that you decline nearly half the people. Um, you it's just about keep- 40%. Yeah. yeah, you keep it clean, uh, which is which is very very cool. And when, if people and people and there are people who think they're slick, right? Yeah. And they say they say they won't spam the group, and then like their first post is spammy. Yeah. And delete. They get they get removed and blocked. I mean, yep. those people, there's no second chances. So yeah, you know, I love that. I love that out. about the group. Yeah. I I, uh, I lo- and then you also have daily questions, which I always I think is a lot of fun. Yeah, the daily questions are really fun. Um, they're mostly about real estate, but sometimes I try to mix it up and talk yeah. about other other things. And you know, so uh, it's it's just people really like them. And I do fun stuff in there, like you know, I I really, as you know, Michael, like I I take on the the gurus with their <laughs> high price programs and they're you know posing in front of the private jet they oh, God, yes. rented for the day or the Lamborghini. <laughs> So I, I also, period, I try to do this every week, but I can't always find the time. But I, I have a uh, very obviously fake, not yes. even well photoshopped picture of a Lamborghini. And um, I offer rides in the Lamborghini. Yeah, the orange Lamborghini. People. Yeah, the, it's the yellow Lambo. Or yellow, it's, yeah. It's the, it's the rented guru Lambo. <laughs> I offer rides in the Lambo to people who have, been really active in the group over the last you know week or month or whatever so yeah i always I get remember, a good chuckle <laughs> when i remember to do that i got the private jet i haven't let anybody ride the private jet yet but um i'm thinking if somebody does something really special in the group i will offer them a ri- i will take out my wife's picture from the private jet and put theirs in it oh that's awesome so. <laughs> again these are the kinds of things you get i like the daily stuff it's very thought-provoking uh, it's always related. I love the pictures and the co- comedy you bring to with the rented Lamborghini and the private jet and all that stuff. That's, that's, it's awesome. But let's get back to the topic at hand. Sure. Right. Interested in the market, have the money, which is a very dangerous combination. I think that is actually the most dangerous, right? You've got a hundred grand or 500 grand or whatever it is. Your, stump, your company went public. You got a big commission. You sold your house. You got an inheritance, whatever it is. And now you're excited right? You saw, you saw, you maybe saw one of us and, and, you know, we bought at the bottom and sold at the top, but you think it's easy. So you're talking about networking, growing your network. Uh, I think one thing you brought up, I want to dive in deeper is building credibility, right? Yeah. How do you build, how have you seen people build credibility, right? Cause you have it cause you did deals, right? And you have a track record, but if you're coming in today and like today's day one or day 30, how would you recommend you build a track record? How do you point to it, it being the top, right? What, what, what would you recommend? Well, I mean, you can't build a track record without a track record, right? So that's, <laughs> there's a little bit of a chicken and egg thing there, but you can start building credibility with people. And the way that you do that is uh, by, well, f- first of all, you can borrow the credibility that you can use the credibility you already have from your other career. Yeah. Right? So true. if you have something, if you've accomplished something, uh, in your other career, you can, you can use that. And, and look, that's how I got started. The reason that I had a, can't, I, I've been on a bunch of podcasts really recently, so I can't remember if I told you this, but like the, the first investors I got were friends of mine and, and they actually pushed me into the business huh. with, with like the promise of very large checks. 
Okay. And if, if I, cause I, like, I've been talking about this for a long time. They're like, Jonathan, if you just go and like do this, I will give you money to invest. And I had a couple of friends who offered me like substantial checks. Right. And, but why, why did they do that? Why were they willing to say, you don't know anything about real estate, but I'm going to trust you with a lot of my money. Right. Why is that? Yeah. Because I had built credibility with them in mm -hmm. other things I had done over, over time. And in those cases, I mean, I'd known those guys for more than 10 years. So you obviously you don't want to wait 10 years, but yeah. you, you probably have people in your network already who have known you for a long time, yeah. who basically will say to you, like, whatever it is that, you know, I know Michael and Michael is a guy, is a, you know, a guy who's successful at what he does and he's got integrity. And I know that whatever he's going to do is going to be successful or at the very least, he might, he might fail, but I'm willing to take a chance on him because I know he's going to fail with integrity. Right. I mean, he's not going to like take my money and run yeah. off to Bermuda with it. Right. He's going to, he's going to do what he said he did. And like, if the deal doesn't work out, this is after all, this is investment capital. This is risk capital. Right. So, yep. you know, I realize there's risk here. So there's that you have your existing network of people who trust you already, yep. but then you've got sort of the next layer out and those are going to be people who like that first inner ring introduced you to Yep. because you get the credibility, you know, whenever somebody introduces you to someone else, you get their credibility essentially like that person is vouching for you and their reputation travels sure. with, with you to the next person. And then you obviously have the opportunity either to build on it or to lose it. But you, you walk into that relationship if you have a personal introduction with the credibility of the person who introduced you. So this is important to remember that this works not just with investors, but with brokers and other professionals too. So if you're out there and let's say you, you've got the money, but you don't know how to get a deal or you can't, you know, you're on the internet, you're looking at the sites on the internet and you're not seeing anything good. F forget all that. I mean, I tell people, if I, I know there are people who do really well, like bottom feeding on loop net. I think it's a very special skill. They really have to understand the market very, very well to be able to spot those, those opportunities that do pop up from time to time. Um, Cause most of it is junk. Oh, right. Yeah. They go, yeah. But there's, there are people who have really developed a skill like, or they know of a particular market really, really well. So that when that diamond in the rough pops up in their market on LoopNet because for some reason it's been passed on by everybody else, but they know the value that those folks can make a lot of money. But if you're coming in day one, you don't, you can't do that. No. Frankly, I can't do that. Right. So, um, but you can go to brokers, right? And the way to do it is you get introduced by someone that you know. I, I guarantee you that if you look around, like get on your LinkedIn, you know, do some searching on LinkedIn, or you can even, you know, do it backwards where you go and you figure out who the brokers are in the market by either getting on LoopNet or getting on Zillow or wherever you're looking. You know, unfortunately for bigger deals, bigger commercial deals, there's nothing like this, but you can still you can still try to figure out who the brokers are by sure. just Googling, you know, in your marketplace for commercial real estate, find out who those brokers are, plug them into LinkedIn and find out how you're connected. Cause I guarantee you're probably connected to them somehow. Oh, for some, and yeah, for sure. Yeah. And get an introduction. If you go in with a personal introduction, you like instantly, your credibility is just like supercharged. Oh, for sure. If you, if you do that. And so, you know, if you, if you want to, you know, sort of build on what we were talking about before, like building that relationship with, if you've got your investor money already lined up or some of it, you know, but you want to start getting those broker relationships in place. And they, they'll, they're also, it's important to do that now before a correction happens. Mm -hmm. You can start just go, going through personal introductions. There, if you're introduced personally, the broker is going gonna, is gonna to take your call. They're going to no respond to your email. If you just cold email them or cold call them, I mean, you know, it's a toss up as to whether you're going to hear back. But if you get a friend and, and the best thing is like a personal friend, not somebody who's even like in the business, right? Yeah. The home run case is if you find out that like the, the broker is the, the brother of some guy you do business with or your college friend or whatever, you know, whatever it is, like exactly. th that's the absolute best way to get that introduction because then their guard is down and like, yeah. you know, it's, it's just a totally different thing. So right, it's, it's absolutely a favor at that point. I totally agree. Yeah. The best, you know, I sold, I was in sales for 20 years, you know, high price, seven figure software sales. 
And the best warm introductions I got were from friends, not business acquaintances, right? Hey, I know your next door neighbor's, I don't know, eye doctor or whatever, right? And you just work in via personal relationship, then it's a favor. And you're probably talking to them on the weekend, right? Where their guard is down intentionally and then they agree to a Tuesday meeting at nine o'clock and they'll bring everybody together. So totally agree. Look for LinkedIn, look for how you're connected. Get, get a personal friend if you can. That would be a, a high praise for that. It's a good, good advice. Yeah, it's just, it's just the way to go. I mean, yeah. I, I, I can't emphasize I, I, more strongly the, that, that personal relationship thing. And I, and I was just on Bigger Pockets yesterday, actually, and somebody had posted this question of like, they, they, they posted the question, does networking work for getting deals? And I was like, absolutely. And people, you know, people were saying, oh yeah, I network with, with um, owners and whatnot, which is also you know, true. It's a little harder to f- find out who they are, but, but I, nobody had said network with brokers and people were like complaining, like I'm looking on Zillow and I'm just, just, <laughs> the deals aren't any good. I can't find the deals that make sense. And I'm like, look, cause the good deals don't even hit Zillow. Exactly. Cause they've, cause they've already been, they've already been snatched up by the people that the broker knows personally exactly. and they're only bothering to put it on Zillow if nobody takes it. So like you want to get into that inner circle. How do you get in? Well, it's networking, right? You yeah. got to So find the broker, figure out how you're connected, get a personal introduction. Now you're in. And the great thing is that the brokers like, you know, there's all, oh, there's always all this, like, can I get, proof? how do I, if I don't have proof of funds, what do I do? And all this kind of stuff. Like, if you go in through a personal introduction, you're not getting asked those questions. Exactly. Right? Cause they just are going to assume that you are legitimate, right? Yeah. When somebody knows you and trusts you and likes you, they start projecting onto you all kinds of qualities that you may or may not even have. <laughs> and one of them may be that you can close the deal. Yeah. And, and that, um, so when you're going in, you know, with a personal introduction, then like a lot of these questions just drop away all these credibility, you know, the, the filter, the, the, all the stuff they're doing to try to filter people out. A lot of it falls away if you're coming in through a personal uh, connection. I totally agree. Yeah. And um, I think, I think we'll just lay out for folks because you said something there that people may hear, but not really understand. Let's just say a, a broker gets a lead on a quote unquote good deal, right? Uh, you know, somebody passed away, their heirs don't want it, I, I, you know, make it as big as you want. This is what happens from my experience. And then you tell me where I'm wrong, right? Feel free to, to expand. They're going to go to their, their five fra- favorite buyers who have, you know, proven to perform uh, time and time again. They've probably done four or five transactions already. They're going to get the first right. Then after that, there's the next 20 or so folks. And again, these numbers are just made up, but 20 or so folks that maybe have done a deal. Maybe they've proven to be interesting. They asked the right question. Then they're going to go to the office, see if anybody in the office makes sense. And then at some point, you know, after a week, if nobody has said yes, then they'll throw it on Zillow or LoopNet or whatever. Is that, does that feel kind of right to you? Yeah. For, for, the, for the deals that are for the, the Zillow type deals, right? Yeah. yeah I mean, that, like that, of that size. Because I think, I'm not sure exactly, but I believe that like the brokers have to pay to list on Zillow or they things do. like that. So, so why are they going to want to, they're not going to want to incur that expense if they can, and, or any marketing expense. No, frankly, any. Right. That's, yeah. that's where, you know, people, people are always, like I'd say brokers, brokers get a really bad rap. And, and part of it is deserved because there are a lot, it's a, there's a low barrier to entry and a lot yeah. of people are in the business who have no business being in it and they will drop out quickly. And, and you might be unlucky enough to like deal with them in, in that like six month span that they're sure. in the business. Right. But the good brokers, they really know what they're doing and they can, they can make your career if you, oh, no question. if you have um, good relationships with them. Right. So they know the market, they, you know, and, and they, they know the deals, they know the sellers, right? So th- these people are, are like gold and you should treat them that way. But um, the, the, the thing that I think a lot of people don't really understand is that, you know, brokers are entrepreneurs and they are investing their own money oh, yeah. into marketing these deals, right? It's not, like, it's not like Keller Williams's money or, you know, or Marcus and Millichap's, maybe for the, some of the bigger 
ones, it's a little different, but still like they, they, they're investing, especially at, for these like single family houses and duplexes and stuff like they, they've got it. They're basically like 1099 employees. Oh, right? sure. They're not employees, right? They're 1099s. They have their, oftentimes they have their own company that they're just using the, the brand, you know, they're paying a fee to use the brand and get the listings. And so they have to invest money into marketing these deals. And that is coming out of their commissions. So yeah. people are complaining like, oh, I've got to pay so much for commissions and that's crazy and whatever. Look, these, yeah. not only do they have to make a living, but B, they are investing money up front. Oh, for sure. That they're hoping to get back with a profit when they make a commission. So if they can avoid that expense, right? If they can avoid marketing expenses, then, that's what they're going to do. So first they're going to go to all the people that they already know where, they, where it's just a phone call, right? Where yeah. they don't have to spend any money. And it's only going to be after all those people have passed and told them like, Hey, look, I just bought a deal. And, and, you know, I'm still working on that or whatever it is, yeah. you know, after they've gone through all those people, then they'll say, okay, well now I got to spend some money and I got to put it on Zillow and I got to do marketing. So yeah. you don't, you want to be earlier in that process. Right. And it's the same thing for big commercial deals, right? Like they, those big commercial brokers, if you've ever seen those packages they put together, right? Uh -huh. There's a lot of investment of time and money that goes into putting those packages together to getting their marketing campaign, you know, mm -hmm. together. It's, it's costly. And so they would rather slap together like a one or two page summary, you know, and send that to or just even pick up the phone yeah. and call you if you're if you're known to them and say hey i've got this deal i've got the financials i'm going to set if you sign an nda i'll send them over to you right away there's no marketing in, yeah. involved in that there's no expense for them that's what they want so you want to be at that point of the process rather than the looking on the internet yeah point of the process right T totally agree you want to be involved before it hits the mass market anytime there's lots of eyeballs on it you know, competition goes up. You've already, you already have to realize a lot of people said no already. Yeah. Right. And, and the thing is like people act as if there's some kind of like mystery yeah. <laughs> to getting onto the broker's list and there's no mystery. It's just involves a little bit of work, not even yeah. that much work, but it involves frankly more work than most people, you know, most of the people that are on bigger pockets or, wherever they're like armchair investors, right? Yeah. They're not actually ever going to do anything. Yeah. And the, and then those are the people who get on the internet and they're like, Oh, I can't find a good deal. Oh, what's the secret. And then, and then, you know, they're willing to like go and pay 10,000 bucks sometimes to some guy yeah. or 20,000 bucks for secrets. Right. Yeah. About how to, how to get broker deals. I'm telling you the secret, find the broker, get a personal introduction. That's the secret. Right. Yeah, exactly. And it takes, and go like, go meet with them, go to their office, like, you know, or frankly, I'll tell you like, well, here's a secret, right? If you're investing out of town, you know what the magic words are for getting a, a, a meeting with a broker? What? What, what do you think? Uh, I'm going to be in town on Sunday, the 15th. Uh, I'd like to meet you at 11 o'clock. I'm flying in. Yes. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to meet in. you in person. Yep. Yeah. I'm flying in. And I'm going to be there for a day and I would like to meet you while I'm there. Yeah. Right. And like, those are some pretty powerful words yeah. because exactly you're a, you're showing that you're making effort. B you're, you're scarce because you're only going to be there for one day. Yeah. Right. And, and so these are kind of like the, these are like psychological triggers that act on people. Like it's very, I mean, just as an, I go, I have a tendency to go off on the tangents. I'll just tell you a little story about how this works in a very different context. So about 20 years ago, I, uh, when I was still a lawyer, I decided that I was tired of being in New York. I wanted to move to Boston. That was originally my plan. Like all along that was sort of, growing up. That was always my plan anyway. So I got a little tired of being in New York and I was like, you know what? Back to plan A, right? I'm going to go move to Boston. and what happened when I moved there was I've it's, it's a much smaller town than New York city. It's a lot harder to like penetrate the social networks and stuff. And I found myself basically coming back to New York city almost every weekend to hang out with my friends. And what I found though, was that, so, 
you know, normally in New York City, everybody is really busy. You can't meet anybody. Nobody has time, right? But when I would tell people, I'm coming down from Boston this weekend. Would you like to get together? They were always like, oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. right? And it didn't matter that actually I had come down the weekend before also. Ah. <laughs> right? like, like, even though I was there like every single weekend coming down, it still had that same sense of urgency and scarcity for people that they would make time to hang out. So I actually had a better social life with my friends in New York when I lived in Boston, <laughs> then I did living in New York before or after that. So the, that's it's, great. Just understand it's a, like a really, when you give people like a very definite yeah. and limited opportunity to meet you, yeah. the chances are much higher that they will. So it works the same. And, you know, brokers, despite what some people think, are actually human beings. <laughs> and they, they react the way that other human beings react, right? Yeah. So they have the same psychological triggers. So if you, if you tell somebody, Hey, I'm flying into town, I'm going to be there, you know, for, for these two days, yep. you know, can I swing by your office and meet you in person? I'd really like to meet. I mean, of course they're going to say yes. Yeah. Right. So it, yeah. the, the less effort you make them make the better. Yeah. And again, you want to differentiate yourself. The whole idea of my example of, of from the first five to the next 20 is, the more and more you stand out and are different than others, the more likely you're going to get a yes answer. So um, you're flying in from out of town. You're, you're giving them two days. You're showing that you have money. I mean, it's, it's not free to, to fly out of town. So they know you have something just, again, they're just putting these things on you like, Oh, okay, well they've clearly got money. Right. They're, they're, they're in, and they're, and they're, and they're really interested. Right. It's not like the 17 voicemails I have on my phone from people, the bigger pockets that found my phone number and called me. Right. You're, you're, you're just different. Um, so, yeah. And it's also like, you know, the other thing that to not do, and this is what people do to me all the time. They're <laughs> like, Hey, um, would you, I would love to get an hour of your time coaching me yeah. with all your expertise, um, in exchange for a $3 cup of coffee. Yeah. Right. And it, it's like, I, I've got, coffee in my office. Right. I mean, I, I don't need coffee Yeah. and I, and an hour is tough for me to spare. Yep. So you got to make it a better offer than that. And at the very least, you know, when you, and brokers the same way, like, don't say like, I'd like to buy you a cup of coffee. They don't really care about the coffee. What, I mean, I know why you do it. Cause you're trying to offer them something for busy people. The best thing you can offer them is to make less effort and take less time. So yeah. rather than saying like, I want you to leave your office and come to Starbucks to meet me someplace. Say, I would like to go to your office yeah. and meet you there. And, and um, you know, just for 15 minutes, just to make the acquaintance. Yeah. And that, that can be, because you're making it almost friction. It's very hard for them to say no if you're, if you're making it like so easy. For, they, don't, they don't have to go anywhere. They don't have to like, you're, you're, you're saying it's a very little, you know, it's a very small time commitment. Yep. Fact of the matter is you're probably going to get more than 15 minutes from them once you get in the door. But by telling them, Hey, it's, it's, I, I just want to go and say, and just meet you in person say hello and just yeah. put a name to a face kind of thing. Like it's very difficult for people to say no to that. And then once you get in the door, then you get a conversation going and then they're going to remember you. And then now you're, and if, unless you, you know, come across as, as being a complete jerk, the chances are they're going to say, Hey, that's great. You know, I'm going to show you deals when they come in the door. You're going to want to have the opportunity yeah. then to tell them what your criteria is. And, and something that's important as part of the credibility building process is you should have something prepared for sure that you can get hand to them or email them with what it is that you're looking for. Because otherwise, look, they're, they're going to forget. They're human beings. They've got a lot going on. They're not going to remember what you're looking for unless you give them something they can hang on to. Exactly. And, you know, we'll put it into an email that they can then search again. But you don't want to do that off the bat when they don't know you. You want to do that afterwards yep. when they know you. Totally agree. Jonathan, this has been so much fun. Again, I love how this topic just kind of morphed its way. I think we really, really help people. Again, we're two guys that think we're near the top, right? We're, we're, we're bouncing around the top. So it's not really a great time to get in, but you've given them so many things to do now. Uh, once again, how can people follow you, get a part of the group, uh, all that good stuff? Yeah. So um, again, the, the, the free group is called Multifamily Investment Community. It's on Facebook. 
enter, you know, use your computer to join the first time. So you can answer those questions after that, you can use your phone. Uh, I also have a free giveaway. It's called the ultimate checklist to buy your first hundred plus unit multifamily property with other people's money and get paid to do it. Nice. Uh, you can get that uh, by going to my website, which is multifamily launchpad, all one word, multifamily launchpad.org. So not.com dot org. And you can download it from there and you'll get the download and it'll also get you on my daily email list. Multifamily launchpad.org. That's right. Awesome. I will put that in the show notes because people got to go get that checklist, get on your mailing list. And uh, Jonathan, this has been so much fun. Thank you for giving us your time this morning. Yeah, thank you. I look forward to the next one. You got it, man. Take care of yourself. Thank you too.